All right, y'all. So I really wanted to bring something today that uh, I thought it was just super cool. And uh, I've really been wanting for actually quite a long time uh, since a good buddy of mine, um, he had one of the, uh, shall we say, older uh, Walther made MP522 clones, clones, if you want to call them that, right? It, it's basically an MP5 format uh, rifle that they had chambered in 22. So the size, shape, dimensions, and everything were, were basically the same as the real MP5. And I, I totally fell in love with that when I, when I first uh, encountered it uh, many, many, many years ago when I was in California for uh, some training. So uh, thankfully, uh, Umarex, uh HK branded stuff, okay, uh, they came out with some newer updated MP5 versions of the 22. And uh, that's exactly what I have here. As you can see, this is very clearly a MP5 uh, style, <laughs> if you want to call it that, uh, 22. And the way you can tell that easily just from looking at it, right, is of course the magazine here. This is very clearly a 22LR uh, magazine. Regular MP5 mags do not look like this, of course. So um, I was very, very excited when HK announced that they were going to do these. Now, obviously, this is HK licensed. This is not made by HK. This is, of course, made by Humorex, uh, which has a lot of close partnerships and production type things with, um, well, Walther and HK. So uh, I think they may have also been involved with the STG 4422, uh, you know, whatever company is producing that now. But of course, uh, there is a lot of um, intricacies in dealing with like who's actually making what and, and what is licensed by who, so on, so forth. It, it's really complicated. But the point is, a lot of these 22 uh, large format, I guess, clone type things, reproductions, if you want to call them that, uh, pretty much typically come from the same companies uh, over in Germany. So uh, yeah, I mean, this looks like your regular MP5, standard MP5, of course, with uh, no buttstock here because this is a pistol version. And as you can see, no pistol brace here. Okay, so this is this is pistol, eh, pistol, right? Thanks, ATF. Uh, so yeah, uh, I got this from right, pretty much right when they first came out because I've really, really been wanting one of these MP5 formats in 22 because, as everyone knows, an actual MP5 is, is like, very expensive. Uh, an actual H&K MP5 is even more so. We're talking, like, three grand, you know, or, or, or more even in some cases. Um, you know, whereas the other clones like PTR, MKE, Zenith, POF, what, all the clone companies you want to name, typically start at a thousand and go up from there, right? So it's not not a cheap chunk of change, right? This is, it's a significant amount of money. But when HK announced these, you know, being right around the price point of around 450, 500, maybe 600 on the top end, right? For these, uh, I was like, man, this, this, is, this is the time to go and get one of these because the original uh, Walther ones like this, man, that is, that is money. Uh, you're talking eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars now in Gunbroker to find one of those Walther ones, and frankly, to me, the GSG copies, the uh, the I, I have I have tried those and they just don't feel quality. Uh, they just don't look right. Uh, in fact, there was actually for a little while where GSG was making their GSG five or whatever they were calling it their their version of this basically. Um, and they got so close to the actual HK pattern that uh, HK actually told them to uh, cease and desist, stop being, stop being naughty, stop making it so close to the original, right? So there actually was a brief time where uh, GSG was coming out with their MP522 clones and they actually offered furniture upgrade kits to kind of get around that to make their, their versions look more like a regular MP5. Those have since dried up and I haven't seen those in a few years. And the current production GSG 15s, I think, or whatever they call them now, with the ugly uh, tri, tri rail kind of pick rail thing and the weird stock thing they got going on, they're, they're just not the same. It just doesn't give you the same experience as it does with a true blue, you know, quote unquote official licensed MP5 clone like this or one of the older Walther ones. So, like I said, this is a, a, a grand opportunity to be able to get yourself one of these very, very nice uh, 22 caliber uh, MP5 clones, right? It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity. 
But uh, yeah, so I bought this one because I, I really liked all the features and like the length and everything was, was, was perfect for like kind of the, the classic MP5 look I was going for. Because, uh, you know, I was influenced, of course, by Counter-Strike way back in the day. And the MP5 uh, Navy, of course, was one of the most used submachine guns in that game. Because it was one of the best ones to use for the price, money, everything else. It was just really, really good to go. And so I, I've always wanted one. And, of course, you know, me being also a Half-Life fan um, from video games, of course, the MP5 from the Half-Life is absolutely classic. Somehow they had a 50-round magazine and a and a, a 40 millimeter grenade launcher on top of that at the same time. Yeah, whatever, it's, it's video games, right? But the cool factor was there. So obviously the MP5 has a absolutely legendary reputation in terms of like action flicks, movies, video games, stories, whatever you wanna call it, actual practical use by real life operators doing real life stuff. Uh, MP5 is definitely right there. And of course, I've, I've actually had some uh, full auto experiences with uh, real MP5s. And I still have to say, to this day, I honestly believe the MP5 is the best 9mm submachine gun that you can get. Because full auto fire, like that thing does not move. It just, you hold down the trigger and you just hold it there and it just stays and you just hose the target down. There is there's no need to like super, super clamp down and really lean forward, do all this stuff. None of that. Full auto fire on a, on, a, on a real MP5 is utterly controllable. It doesn't feel like a direct blowback. It doesn't feel like anything else. I, I don't even think the SIG MPX, honestly, comes even close to a true blue MP5. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that all goes into the, the reasons why I got this. Now, I also do kind of want the uh, the quote-unquote rifle version of this, where it, it's, it's the MP5 SD. 22, where basically they take this barrel and they lengthen it to 16 inches or so. I think it's 16 and a half. And they put this uh, fake uh, suppressor suppressor shroud thing over it to make it look like an MP5 SD. And that's the MP5 that has um, basically the, the standard length of the barrel, right? Uh, about this size. But then they have a big suppressor thing here on the end of it that's... Uh, it's basically integrally suppressed, where it's all part of the, the, the whole assembly here. And they have drilled a lot of holes into the barrel, actually, that go into the suppressor itself to make it ultra quiet. It's super, super cool. Um, I'm sure there's a few videos on YouTube showing MP5 SDs actually being used, uh, full auto fire and everything. It is super, super, super cool. Um, definitely recommend you check that out. But anyway, um, that's the rifle, the rifle version of the 22 is supposed to mimic that MP5 SD look. But the good thing is it is, cha uh, not chambered, it is a correct rifle length barrel to satisfy ATF regulations so that way it can actually have a quote unquote real stock. So it has a collapse uh, in, um, well, I guess telescopic uh, stock that kind of comes out with the two prongs and a bit of a, a flat plate on the end there. So I, I've kind of wanted to get that one too, just to kind of like complete it because um, this one and the other one are, are you know, it, it would make a nice set to have. So, and of course with the recent uh, brace rulings, okay, uh, it is not feasible for me to um, put a brace on this pistol because ATF says that's SBR. So yeah, um, while I don't like, you know, laws being made by an agency that does not have the authority to make laws. Uh, that is unfortunately the nature of things we have to deal with at the moment. I hope it changes in the future, but of course I am a law abiding citizen and I of course would never ever think about breaking any sort of law like that. So um, yeah, so all that aside, those are the reasons why I got this. And um, for shooting experiences, I will say this thing, I, I, I've actually had it for quite a while now. Uh, shooting experience was actually pretty darn good. I was stupid and I did not read the manual, of course, as I should have. So the uh, rear sight here is the correct kind of aperture drum style sight that we're used to seeing on a lot of HK type firearms like this. And I was just kind of fooling around with the apertures here, just testing the different sight pictures to see, you know, you've got a large aperture here, you've got a medium and a small, and then you have uh, even smaller than that. Um, for precise shooting and things like that. But what I didn't realize is that when you rotate this drum, it actually changes the elevation up and down. 
I didn't realize that because on my PTR-91, it's not really how the drum sight works. You can rotate it as much as you want. It, it doesn't change the elevation as far as I've noticed. But on this one, it absolutely does. So when I first took this thing out uh, to about 10 yards, it was hitting so freaking high from where I was aiming. I thought to myself like, wow, this thing must be zero for like 25, 50 yards or something. But even then, when I took it out to 50 yards, I... <laughs> I accidentally had the rear sight all the way up. So it was it was hitting like super freaking high, like artillery shell into the target type of thing. It was hitting so high, it was crazy. And I thought, man, there must be, there must be something wrong with the gun or I must be doing something wrong. Uh, so I went back into the manual and sure enough, I read when you rotate this, this rear drum sight here, it actually does change the elevation. So uh, I was like, wow, I'm pretty dumb. Should have read the manual. Uh, so definitely read the manual for as far as zeroing this thing because uh, the front sight in this is, I, I'm not going to say it's fixed because they do offer you a different front sight, but the construction of this, and this has been clear already, so don't worry, um, the construction you can see there's a little, um, uh, I guess, screw bolt right there in the base of this front sight, and so it slides right out the back, and you can put the other replacement shorter uh, front sight here in the front sight post. So that is the only front side adjustment you'll be able to make. There is absolutely no uh, windage uh, adjustment for this, unfortunately. But the good news is this gun did not need any windage adjustment because it was hitting spot on at every single range that I was going on as far as uh, windage. Of course, the elevation, like I said, once I got the sight tuned down exactly to where I needed it to be, uh, it was hitting point of aim, point of impact. So. Of course, all that can be negated if you get a uh, sight optic rail that fits this. This is not a standard MP5, um, I guess, pattern for the receiver here, because I actually tried that with a cheapo one from, uh, shoot, I forgot where I got it from. But anyways, it was a cheapo MP5 type claw mount that kind of went on top of this, and it absolutely did not fit. The only ones that I've seen that actually do fit have been from HK Parts and they want way too much damn money for them. So I said, screw that. I do not need an optic to fire this effectively. And it's, that's exactly what I went out to go improve one day when I went to the range and I had everything zeroed and nice. I sat this up with, um, you know, uh, 10 rounds of like some match ammo and basically just kind of set it on top of the, the you know, little sandbag there and just ba basically bench rested this thing and shot it at 50 yards to see what kind of uh, accuracy potentially you could get out of something like this. And I was pleasantly surprised, to be honest. Uh, I got basically the same hole in hole at 50 yards if I did my part with uh, some really nice high quality match ammo for 22. And of course I tried it with CCI standard velocity and it also did very, very excellently. There was no problems to feed. There was no problems with reliability. There's no problems with jamming, cycling, any of that stuff. It worked 100% perfectly. And, uh, you know, I was really, really happy with that. So, awesome. You know, the accuracy is absolutely there. I mean, you may think that, like, with all the plastic construction that goes into these things and the fact that they're made by a different company that's not HK or whatever brand, you might think, like, oh, it, it's just a toy gun or it's just a fun gun. It's, it's, not a, it's not a quality weapon by any stretch. That is absolutely not true. These things are quality made being honest. And uh, shoot, even my SGG 4422, uh, despite that being like one of these 22 reproduction type guns, that thing is freaking accurate. Uh, so do not underestimate the build quality of these things, despite their kind of, you know, diminutive nature. Uh, they actually can shoot very, very well. So this thing is just as accurate as pretty much any other like 1022 or semi-auto 22 that you can think of really, despite, you know, looking like a regular firearm. So that was, uh, accuracy is there. Reliability is there. Um, as far as trigger pull goes though, the trigger on this is nothing to write home about. Honestly, it feels a lot like the SGG 4422 in the sense that it's got a lot of take up and I mean, it's got a, a decent break, but it's not something that you would call a match trigger by any means. The uh, construction and ergonomics of this, I mean, if you know how to operate MP5, you know how to operate this. It's the same thing, all right? So you lock it open on that notch, slap it down, you're good to go. Simple, easy. It's got the nice uh, paddle uh, magazine release here. That's a nice upgrade. 
It also has the button, of course, which I don't think anybody actually uses. Uh, I've never seen anybody actually use these. I've always seen them use the paddle to kind of fit the mag out that way. Uh, fire selector is ambidextrous, which is actually pretty nice. There you go, two position. At least it kind of looks the part, you know. Uh, it's also threaded, half by 28, of course, and you can also do a tri-lug adapter here, which is classic HK, right? They love their tri-lugs. So if you have a tri-lug um, suppressor, you can definitely fit that on here. But I think most people are, are going to do a uh, rimfire suppressor, which is, of course, half by 28. And that's exactly what I did. So I'll just show you here real quick. So I've got my Silencer Co. Uh, Warlock 2 here. Um, this was fresh out of jail just recently. And uh, of course, I really, really wanted to suppress this gun because I was like, man, I, I just, I, I cannot wait to try it. So I'll give you a look-see here on what that looks like. And you'll see it looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks, looks right to me, you know? So this thing is uh, absolutely like super, super quiet <laughs> with the suppressor on. In fact, I think the loudest part of this gun uh, with the suppressor on is, is just simply the bolt um, hitting, the, uh, hitting the, the, the chamber face, right? So like if I let this go, that, that slap where it's hitting the, the chamber, I think that's actually the loudest part of the gun. Uh, when it, you know when I actually go and test fire this thing and I'm, I'm like, you know using like subsonic ammo that actually cycles the action I seriously think the loudest part of it is just the bolt hitting the front of the chamber face like that I, I really do believe that so If you want to be like super like tactical stealth operator kind of thing with your your mp5 And you want to shoot it on the cheap with some subsonic ammo. I mean find find subsonic ammo of course that like cycles this action and you'll just have an absolute blast with this thing. It is it is so much fun to shoot this suppress. It, it just feels so cool. I mean, it's cool. It's fun. You feel all tactical, you know, living out all your whatever, you know, childhood MP5 dreams, action hero dreams, you know. Oh, it's, it's just so cool. So I, I really, really do like shooting this suppressed. And um, the gun doesn't really argue or, or, or do anything strange or differently with the suppressor on. Some guns do. When you put a suppressor on, sometimes it can create a, a situation where it um, tends to run the action a little bit fast because of all the extra like back pressure and things, especially for blowback type guns, it can make it run a little bit fast and make it not as reliable in some cases. But with this one, no problems at all. So definitely uh, recommend if you have a suppressor for 22s. Awesome. Uh, what else? So the maintenance for this is not exactly your standard MP5. Uh, it, and you're not going to be fiddling with a bolt and taking the internals and guts out of this thing. You're just not. And I'll show you why here in a second. Once I take this apart. So you've got your two pins, one back here. Everyone knows that and the pin up here, which is a little different, but that is how this uh, comes apart. Let's so take the back cap off here. Take this off. And here you have your fire control group and um, grip module. I do not think this is compatible with any MP522 parts or grips because the way it's constructed, it's just different from everything else. It's to be expected with these kinds of things. When you start to do construction of, M of 22 caliber designs for full size designs, you kind of have to make some compromises and switch things around a little bit. So this assembled upper here, uh, and as you can see here, that's the, the, the back of the gun, I guess. Uh, you could take this entire like metal cast piece out if you really wanted to. Uh, the manual, of course, does not recommend this. They recommend that pretty much this is all you need to do. So you just kind of lock this back and you can basically clean it from the chamber um, in here. And you kind of have to run like your snakes through here, kind of scrub the chamber face a little bit. Um, you know, uh, feed in your cleaning rods through the muzzle end, which, you know, I, I don't think will really affect it all that much. At least it hasn't for me. For the amount of rounds that I've put through this and cleaned it and everything else, I've had absolutely no issues with this. It's exactly how it is. But like I said, of course, uh, there are ways, of course, to take this entire mechanism out of the plastic shell to really get a deep clean if you really, really need to. But I, I don't think you need to if you read the manual. Now, another interesting feature about this particular 22 
is, and it states this also in the manual, which is how I learned about this actually, so read your manuals. Um, <laughs> this little bolt right here, this bolt right there, that is a tuning adjustment bolt. So the manual states that if you're having trouble cycling certain ammunition, or uh, if you want to make it even more, I guess, intolerant or tighter uh, with certain ammos, you can screw or unscrew this bolt here to make it more or less tolerant of certain ammos. And really you're supposed to do that to kind of fine tune uh, how this thing works. So that way the action's not going too fast. It's not beating itself apart. Uh, you know, if you're only running one type of ammunition of, of, of 22 LR out of this gun and you really, really want to like really crank down and try to make it as nice as possible, that's what this bolt is for. You can adjust it as you need to. I'm not going to say it's like adjusting a gas system because this is not a gas operated mechanism. This is obviously a direct blowback, but something in here affects like the, I guess the, the, the spring tension or something with this mechanism and makes it change um, how reliable it will be with certain ammunition types. So uh, it, I think it is pretty cool that uh, they actually offer this feature and they do talk about it in the manual. So if you have some really, really like low pressure crap bulk 22 and you want to run this thing hard, you want to run it dirty, uh, you can do that. You can adjust this bolt back here and, um, you know, it'll probably run the gun a little bit hard and you might uh, need to clean it a little bit more and the parts may not last as long, you know, because the whole action is kind of beating itself up. But if that's what you want to do, that's what you can do. So, uh, yeah. I think that's a really neat feature that's not really talked about too much with these, at least with the videos and reviews that I've seen. Nobody hardly ever mentions this adjustment bolt here in the back. So I figured I would bring that to y'all. So let's get this back together. That goes there, I think, maybe. There we go, all back together, boom. Now, there is a company um, called, uh, used to be called Dan Haga Designs, but I think it's uh, Haga Defense now. I'll, I'll link it in the description. Uh, he actually made a new, uh, well, I mean, not new, but like a 3D printed kind of end cap that can fit on here to give you a uh, Picatinny uh, backing for these. Because unfortunately, the as I learned the hard way, uh, Standard MP5 accessory back end caps like this for stocks and braces and things like that do not fit the MP5 22. It has to be specific to this gun, which is very unfortunate. Um, I don't think any of the old legacy parts, like if you took one of the old Walther stocks and you tried to put it on one of these, I don't think it would fit, to be honest. And I'm almost 100% sure, okay, 99% sure that the GSG ones also do not fit this. The the cuts in geometry are just ever so slightly different. Uh, I mean, if you had a Dremel tool and some time, you could probably make it fit, but it's it's not how it's supposed to be. So those uh, Hega designs, Hega defense, uh, whatever, uh, he actually does make a end cap that fits this. It has a Picatinny section here, so you can put your favorite um, brace, which is, you know, to not make it an SBR, right? Uh, brace or stock if you were going to make one of these in SBR or if you have the rifle version it uses the same uh, format end cap if you will so if you don't like the telescoping stock that comes with the rifle version you can order the end cap from Haga Defense to give you a Picatinny rail and now you can put your favorite Picatinny style stock brace whatever you want on it and uh, yeah so that's a nice option of course the uh, the front end here I think the uh, I know HK Parts does make like different little aluminum rails and stuff you can fit on here instead of this classic look to give you your M-Lock rails. To, if you, if you want to go like super tactical with this thing and have all kinds of attachments and crap on there. But frankly, I see no need to change the classic look lines and shape of your MP5-22 like this. So, yeah. Um, I will say also, um, whatever you do, do not buy the, do not buy the 25 round magazines from HK parts. They are freaking just totally scalping these things I think they want like either between 60 or $80 for a 25 round magazine like this. When HK's own website, 
and they're in stock granted are I think 25 or $35. So I was lucky enough to sign up for like the uh, email me when you're in stock kind of notifications, right? So I was able to order uh, two more of these magazines for about, I think 35 bucks a piece. Uh, so I was fortunate to be able to get those, um, you know, before they went out of stock. But absolutely do not give HK Parts your money for these magazines because they're charging way too damn much. Uh, I don't care if they're hard to find. That's just, I mean, I get it's a business and they want to make money, but that's just scummy, okay? When you're charging that much more for a magazine like this, scummy, very scummy. So um, that is also the unfortunate part of this, that the fact that it only comes with one magazine, like, come on, guys, you can ship it with more than that. Um, two magazines minimum, three is preferred, right? So, yeah. Um, so all that being taken together, uh, I really, really, really like the the value that these things offer because I, I feel like these are going to go the same way as the as the Walther clones in the sense that they're only going to make them for a few years and they're just not going to make them for a long time. And then maybe they'll bring them back if the interest is enough. But for right now, uh, honestly, it's, it's really, really hard to like um, overstate the value that you're getting because, I mean, come on. It, it's HK Mark right here. It looks like an HK. It doesn't say Walther over it, okay? It looks and is marked genuine H HK, even though it is, I know, it, it's it's only licensed, but, um, you know, give it 10, 15 years, and these things will probably be at the same position as the Walther clones are now, or at least a few years ago, where people were asking, like I said, 800, 900,000 bucks for these things because they just don't make them anymore, you know? And honestly, they're quality guns. They really are. The accuracy there is, is there. The um, reliability is there. The looks are there. Everything, the functionality is just, it's just there. So it's it's just, um, I think it's a great value, to be honest. And I'm, I'm really, really happy that these are on the market and that they, uh, they brought them back and, and are making them like this, especially in this short pistol format, too. Because... To be honest, it, it the 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 old Walthers did look a little goofy with their like 16 inch like shroud barrel things that they had on them. It, it just looked kind of goofy, but this of course is the classic look. So the only way they can make this even better is if they came out with like an MP5K 22 style, where it was like even shorter. You know that that would be like super super cool. Um, but uh, yeah, I can I can hope and wish. So someday I'll probably go get the. Um, the rifle length the SD version of this uh, just to have them as a pair put them together and be like all right cool <laughs> I'm kind of settled on my 22 clones so but yeah 22 will always be a nice viable kind of cheap shooting option in case I don't want to like take a 9 mil mp5 out and just kind of blast with that I can kind of you know blast with this so yeah I uh, I'm very happy with these and how they turned out and how reliable and quality they have been the price is is on point, honestly, I think they're worth every penny. I had a lot of fun with one of these. It's just, uh, I wish it would take a little bit more of standard like MP5 parts to kind of, you know, really be able to deck it out without, without having to get specific parts that fit this, especially like an optics rail. I would love to put a red dot on this, but I just don't want to pay the price for HK parts, um, little claw mount system to put a red dot on here, or maybe even like a scope or something. Because uh, that would really give me the accuracy potential to really, really see just what this thing's capable of. But in the meantime, I'm definitely happy with how this looks and how it performs now. So really can't recommend these enough. They're a ton of fun. They, they look the part. They're super cool. Uh, I've just enjoyed mine, you know. So I will definitely be shooting this for many, 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 many more hundreds, thousands of rounds to come. Especially with suppressor. So much fun. So much fun. But uh, yeah, I just thought I'd bring this to you guys because I've, I've actually had it for a little while now and I figured, well, now's as good as any time to talk about a pistol, you know? So uh, of course I would never ever put a brace on this uh, because, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't break laws, of course. So yeah, but anyway, um, figured I'd bring it to you guys. And um, if you guys have one of these or you're looking to get one, it is, it is a super huge recommend from me. Um, just tons of fun, tons of fun, but yeah. That's all I got to say about that, and uh, we'll catch you next time.